the iced tea is freezy cold. The robot is very, very frisky. And I'd like to welcome you to the Wednesday, September 17th edition of Modern Blog Daily, where Bill just rants with a cup of iced tea or coffee or water, <laughs> but not adult beverage. <laughs> And today I'm going to rant on a, a motto I did last night, and I just filmed it this morning, called a Lego Planetary Gearbox. I did the same model yesterday in the Fisher Technique, and made several videos of it, a fine model at that. It came right from the Fisher Technique Professional Series, Mechanics plus Static 30 model kit. I've had some questions. I'm going to show you uh, some specifics about this model, but I've had some questions about the operation of the planetary gear in a transmission of a car. Actually, they use planetary gears in both automatic and manual transmissions. I have a, a switch here, a manual switch where I can go uh, to the left or uh, in the middle it's in neutral. It's engaging the gear basically. In a car you have an engine. The engine is driving a drive shaft and the drive shaft is going to go at various speeds depending on how you put your foot to the floor. <laughs> it would be very bad policy to take the drive shaft and go directly to the wheels. Well what they do is they use a planetary gear to isolate the wheels from the drive shaft. Here you see the wheels at the end of uh, the differential from the transmission. But if you stop it, if you hit something or whatever, the motor still goes. That's what they use the planetary gear for, to kind of control the torque and the motion of the wheels. I, uh, I had a difficult time deciding how to build this. Uh, one of the reasons is you're, you're limited by the, uh, the parts. The, the, the part that I, I, you have to have a hollow gear. See, in a, in a planetary gear, the middle gear is called the sun gear. The two gears going around the sun gear are called planet gears. And the, they're, they're rubbing up against uh, and meshing against what they call a hollow gear. Well, Lego makes, as far as I know, one hollow gear. And they use it in a mount for uh, cherry pickers or, you know, whatever. And uh, I, I knew about this gear, but the thing was, it, it's very tricky to use it in the fashion in which I, I decided to use it. So what I did, I spent a considerable amount of time engineering a very special, let me zoom in there so you can see some of it. That shaft goes right through the middle. See those two uh, spacer? And comes out the other end. So you got a shaft and I had to keep it centered. Now take a look here. It's going to be hard to see. I have two uh, uh, spacer holes to, to keep it centered. And, and once I had it centered, then I had to extend it all the way through. And uh, I had to create a planetoid holder for the planet gears. And that's exactly what I did. And they, fortunately for me, meshed up perfectly where I could put three small gears across the width of the hollow gear and it would uh, would work and it worked and it, and it actually works very fine so uh, th th this is uh, uh, an amazing apparatus what I'm thinking about doing guys is uh, working my way into a two-speed automatic transmission now you think about it what what does a transmission do? Well, it controls when you push your foot on the floor and increase the speed 
you want it to to go from a, 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 a lower gear to a higher gear. What's that mean? That means you want on a low gear you want to be able to to have more turns to engage in your acceleration, but when you get to a higher speed, you want it to be more or less uh, turning it real fast with the motor. So you can go in and out amongst the gears. Now you take a look at this uh, particular design here. I, I specifically added these three different gears. If you mesh them up with one control gear, that one control gear is going to have different speeds. On the outer circumference it would have the fastest speed, then the medium speed, and then the slower speed. And uh, or maybe it's the other way around. What well, depends on the configuration. So what you need to do is you need to put a you, you, you put it here's two things. You put a governor a governor that will change as as the speed increases and I've built a governor you can watch one of my videos on on how to build a governor as a, you put a governor on the end here and as the speed increases the governor goes out and when the governor goes out it mechanically moves uh oh uh oh it mechanically moves the gearing from one gear to the next. If there's three gears or two gears, whatever. So the governor, as it moves, based on the uh, velocity and rotational speed of the drive shaft, will engage one of the three gears. As you uh, increase the speed, it will slip from one gear to the next gear to the next gear. And when you go back from, and you decrease it, it goes back down. And that's how a transmission works, guys. I think that I have all the mechanics and the knowledge necessary to build a three-speed transmission, if not a two-speed transmission of the automatic nature. The only thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to break open my next. <laughs> I've been putting my next off, not not because I, I I don't enjoy it. I've worked on it and everything. I love it. It's just that some of this stuff is so complicated that I, I don't want to you to tune out. But I might bring out my next for the simple reason to to get a controlled, uh, you know, to vary the speed of the motor. We'll we'll see. In any case, that's where I'm thinking and where I'm heading. You know, I might not do it tonight or tomorrow, but I'm I'm thinking I'm cogitating on it guys. <laughs> Bill and Red and a very, very sleepy, sleepy robot wish for you and yours. A wonderful day ahead. And my robot snores. He snores guys. Sayonara friend. Sayonara.